Next up is item number 17, presentation and update on EPA water service line inventory. Mr. Jordan Hughes. All right, good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, the next agenda item I have for you is a brief presentation on EPA's new lead and copper rules in regards to water systems the mandated lead service line inventory and what that means most importantly for our water customers here in Newburn. So we'll start with just a real brief history of, of lead and copper rules from the EPA on why they're important in water systems. As you came out of the 70s into the 80s, a lot of research on the health effects of lead and lead becoming banned in a lot of materials, paint, uh, water system components, uh, which is a few that come to mind. Uh, so the EPA has been in this game for a long time regulating lead in water systems. Initial rules went in place in 1991, and ever since then the rules have evolved, mostly in monitoring uh, holistically the water system. So since 1991, all water system providers, including Newburn, have been required to take water samples, test for lead. Those practices have changed over the years. <coughs> um, the most uh, recent rule revisions are very specific. We actually have to go and look for the the places in the city and the places in the water system where we think we have the highest probability of finding lead, and those are where we take our samples. It, it's very hard to do, it's very time consuming, it's very costly. The good news for Newbern, and it's no surprise because where we are geographically, we've had very little issue. We've had zero detects, actually, we've had non detects with all of our lead sampling, and because of that, the EPA and the state have actually allowed us to do what they call reduced monitoring. So we actually, have, we actually do monitoring at a, a greater frequency than is normally required because our results have been so low. So it's a good thing for us. Um, moving into 2021, we have the latest round of, of, of updates to the rule. Most importantly, uh, what came out of that is the need to inventory your entire water system and find out how, what your service lines are made of and how many of those are led. So that's what we're gonna hit on diet, talk a little bit about that program and how it impacts our water customers. So just a real brief summary of kind of the exposure of lead in the U.S. As you can see, the dark blue here kind of represents the prevalence of lead service lines in the country as you get to the green and the yellow. Um, as we talk about lead and you hear lead in the news and water systems, the, the bigger issues, the Flint, Michigan, the places like that are, are, are predominantly in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region. That's where you see the highest prevalence of lead. As you get into the southeast and the western part of the country, we just don't see it used as much. It just wasn't used as much in construction, even when it was available and it was legal to use. I think that has to do with supply chains where manufacturers were. We just don't come across a lot of it down here in the South. Newburn's a very old city. It's the second oldest water system in the state. Um, we were certainly building water lines and putting in water services when lead was highly used in the country. Just wasn't used a lot down here. On average, we see about eight lead service lines per thousand people in North Carolina. You, you do the math there, that, that would equate to about 320 in Newburn that we would expect to come across, and that feels about right out of our 17,000 customers. So the, a couple of highlights from the new lead and copper rules, and most importantly is the first, they're the lead service line inventory. So all water systems are going to require to do an initial inventory of their service lines. So we have to basically account for every service line we have, determine what that material is from the main to the meter, what we call the, the the owner portion, the, the city-owned portion or system-owned portion, and from the meter to the home, which we call the customer-owned portion of the service line. All that had to be submitted by October 16th. Our initial inventory was complete, submitted and approved by the EPA and the state by, by that deadline. Uh, the next component of that is a public notification required. So depending on what we found in that initial survey, we have to provide notification to certain types of customers. So if it was a lead service line, a galvanized required replacement, or an unknown service line, we're required to send a, a notification to those customers of those materials with some information about what we found, potential exposure risks, and steps moving forward. Um, those notifications will go out to the impacted customers in the, in the weeks to come, and we'll get everything out by that number, November 16th deadline. And lastly, uh, last major requirement here is all this information has to be made publicly. There's got to be a pu public education component. We're hoping to accomplish a little bit of that tonight. As well as we've got some tremendous in-house staff uh, through our water resource department and our GIS divisions that put together a very nice website. It's got all the uh, frequently asked questions. We've got information on health effects of lead. 
We've got an interactive GIS map where you can type in your address and see what the cur current status of our inventory is for your home. We have a quick link where you can take a survey and help us out a little bit with some of the inventory as well. So uh, in the information there at the end of the slide, we'll have links for that. And as well, it's, I think it's on the very front page of this webpage and it'll stay there for a while as we roll out this initiative. So lead, sign, lead service line inventory. Uh, this is uh, something new for water systems. We pretty traditionally have to account for our own infrastructure. We know the mains we have. We should know the service line from the main to the meter. What we really never accounted for because it's not part of the, the service line that we maintain or are responsible for, that piece from the water meter to the home is a portion of the line we don't know much about. Um, from the meter back to the water main, we've got, we've got as-builts, we've got record drawings, we've got old service work orders. We have a pretty good idea of what the water mains are and what's coming from the water main to the meter. Beyond that, it's a big question mark for us. Um, and that's going to be the, the, the hard leg work in figuring out the final piece of the lead line service inventory is figuring out that piece. In that, we must identify every service line as one of four different things, and we have the ability to do that for the two sections of the line, from the main to the meter, the meter to the home. Um, it can either be classified as lead, galvanized require replacement, which is a special classification of galvanized, uh, non-lead, or unknown. And unknown is essentially exactly what it says. It says we just don't know something about that portion, either on the city side or the customer side, we're just not sure, so the whole thing gets classified as unknown. Here's a brief snapshot of our dashboard that our GIS staff has built to help us track all of this stuff. And in this, we're, we're accounting for every service line we've got, the location, a plethora of information about that service line. But you'll notice going left to right, we current, this was an active snapshot of, of, from this week, so currently we're showing zero known lead service lines. And let me, let me explain that for a minute. Um, for the past couple of decades, Newburn's had a very proactive internal policy with lead service lines of finding the place. So we don't keep a running list of where we think we've got lead service lines. Anytime we come across a lead service line making a water repair, a sewer service repair, it is scheduled for replacement. If possible, we do it the same day. If, you know, if we have the ability, we have the resources, we can take care of it that day. We do. If not, it gets scheduled for repair in the subsequent weeks. That one's out of the system. So as we stand today, we don't have a list of places where we know we have lead service line from the main meter because all the ones we've found in the last couple decades, we have replaced. Uh, galvanized, this isn't what you would think in traditional galvanized. This is a special classification of galvanized, which the EPA calls galvanized require replacement, which simply means this is a galvanized pipe that is immediately downstream of a lead line. Since we don't know of any lead lines, we don't have any galvanized down, directly downstream of the lines. Then we have about 11,500 non-lead that we were able to verify through our own service records, uh, building records, and record drawings to show that we, we know that we have 11,500 that are, that are non-lead. These are a combination of PVC, tubing, or, or straight galvanized pipe. And lastly, in, in the real thing here that will impact our customers, the 6,100 unknowns. Now, what this means for most of these 6,100 is we got a real good idea of what it is on the city side of that service. We, we know what's from the main to the meter. What we haven't done is we haven't gone and potholed or dug a hole in everybody's yard to determine what it is between the meter and your home. So that's the question mark we have on those unknowns, is that piece running through your yard to your house. And because that piece is unknown, we must classify the whole thing as unknown. So what does it mean to be unknown? Simply, it just, it's, it's one of the classifications that we have, and because of that, you'll be getting, the, the, those 6,100 customers will be getting a notification letter explaining what the unknown status means. Quick snapshot of what our GIS and our water uh, resource staff is working with as you go through the uh, inventory process. This is a pretty good example of our typical development, probably east of Racetrack Road, east of Glen Burnie. This is Deaver Circle, uh, Henderson Park's on the right-hand corner there. Um, you see some yellow houses, you see some blue houses, you see some blue dots, gray dots, a combination of blue and gray dots. So this is a pretty good example of why you may get a letter and your neighbor doesn't, or vice versa. A couple people on one street may get the letters and two or three may not. Um, it really is a fine line like that. So here on this one example, there's several houses where everything's blue in that inventory, 
We know our side, we know the customer side based on building records that they're fine as well. They're classified as non-lead, they would not receive a notice. There's several, their, their neighbors will receive a notice because mainly because we don't know what's between the, the main and the, uh, the house. And this is pretty typical, I would say, from everything from downtown as you work your way westward, as you get to Simmons Street, you get to um, Glen Burnie and Racetrack. Racetrack's kind of the transition, really anything, mo most development west of Racetrack, you don't have, you don't have the same issue with it. The, all the homes are new enough, the infrastructure new enough, they all qualify to be considered non-lead because of the age. Uh, and that's a typical snapshot of what a, a newer development looks like. I think that's Longleaf Pines over, in the Township 7 area. So th basically all these homes are constructed after 1988. Most of the lines are, are non-lead. Um, and as you look at the distribution of where we're gonna send these letters to, it, it really, it follows that same trend. I've got a copy, I think Brenda's given a copy of the letter to everybody, or we'll give a copy. Um, this is the, the form letter that will go out when we send them out to the customers. Try to highlight there kind of how many are going out by ward so you may have some idea of how many of the, the customers in your ward would be re receiving a letter. And this is not a surprise either. Your, your wards one, two, and five where we have our older homes, our older construction. We have our, a heavier number of uh, recipients there. As you get into wards four and six, a little bit newer construction, um, we, we don't, we're not going to send as many out. And then uh, fortunately for Alder and Astor, as you cross the Trent River, all the infrastructure over there is new enough. It all qualifies as non-lead, so we have, we have zero notifications going out in Ward 3. So next steps in the program, we've kind of got through the first couple there. We've gathered all the initial information. We've built the initial inventory, submitted to EPA. Moving forward, we're basically kind of going around that little loop there. We investigate. We'll evaluate and we'll continue to update with the goal of being able to come back a year from now and have zero unknowns. So what we're going to do is we've, we've already uh, worked out a statistical analysis methodology, submitted it to the state for review. Once approved, we will implement that and that will reduce the number of physical inspections that we have to do greatly in those unknown areas. We'll take that data put it back in the, you know, back in the inventory, and hopefully we better come back to you in a year and say our update is, we have zero unknowns, we know the status of everything, and we'll continue to work with customers. Um, so, a lot of resource out there on the health effects of lead, lead and water. We've tried to gather as much of that as possible and put it on our Lead Safe community page. Like I said, there's a link to that at the very front of the website. Um, there's also a lot of good information and the letters are going out to everybody with an unknown service line. Uh, there are three or four different places you can, you can get a website on there to get more information. There's a way to get right to our the direct address to the Lead Safe community page. There's a QR code on the very back of it that if you want to scan that, you can actually help us in the survey a little bit. If you know what the material is at your home, you say, hey, I know what it is. I had it replaced four or five years ago. I know I've got brand new PVC pipe from the meter all the way to the house. That's wonderful information for us to know. That we have a quick way you can submit that to us uh, through the QR code in the back of that. And as always, if there's any questions, uh, there's contact information, the letter that customers will receive. Uh, all of my direct contact information and, and information for our, our water plant staff is on these slides as well, which will be on the website. So in, when in doubt, give us a call. We'll try to point everybody in the right direction and get everybody the information they need. Um, the big takeaway I want everybody to get from this is there will be a lot of people receiving this letter in the weeks to come. Uh, it, it's not a major problem. It doesn't mean we have found lead in your home. It doesn't mean you've been exposed to lead. It simply means there's a piece of that service line from the meter to your house that we're not sure what it is yet. And that's really what that letter means. Um, it doesn't say that exactly. There's a lot of verbiage that's required in that by the EPA. That's why you know, the front and back of that's a lot of, it says a lot of stuff. Um, and it's a, most of that's form template that's required to be in the letter. Wish we could word it a little bit different, be a little bit softer to the customers. But um, my advice is, anybody have any questions, contact us directly, myself, or Ms. Kendra May, Mr. Dalton Gaskins. We'd be more than happy to talk to groups if needed or answer individual questions, try to give everybody the information they need. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the program or, or <coughs> steps moving forward. Any questions? Yes, Jordan, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so the, 
The white candy cane looking pipe that's in some yards, that's sewer, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, now, if, I'll just use myself for instance. Sure. If my home, um, from the main to my home, is that's my responsibility as a homeowner to get that checked out, or is that something that the city is going to do? So, so my best advice would be anybody, anybody that gets an, one of these unknown service okay. line letters and, and, and coming up, we're continuing to work through that process. It doesn't stop with initial inventory. So our okay. next step in that will be doing field verification. So we're going to okay. figure out exactly which ones we need to field, field verify to kind of dump that data into a statistical analysis model. And that'll give us a, you know, a, a higher level of confidence of what the service lines are everywhere. And that'll check the box we need. In most areas, there's very little to worry about. Like I said, even the places, even the older areas of town where you had homes being constructed when lead was heavily used in the country, there just wasn't much of it used in the southeast. There really wasn't much of it used in Newver. We, we come across very little of it, you know, working in, even in the oldest areas of town. Um, every once in a while we do. We, we come across, you know, a couple, three, four houses in a row that have got lead service lines, and it's just a matter of the, the plumber that put it in at the time or the utility contractor that did it at the time. They had a guy that was comfortable working with it, and that's what he used. Okay. Um, we just don't see a lot of it. It's, if anybody's ever put your hands on a chunk of lead service line, it's extremely heavy. It's tough to work with. So as soon as better materials, lighter materials became available, even though they were still legal to use in the country and they weren't banned, they were still, I mean, everybody made that switch. Nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to continue to use that. When you, can, you got a piece of 20-foot PVC pipe that weighs a fraction of what one foot of lead line weighs. So. Okay. You can answer another question. So thank you very much. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for the time. Thank you.